Oh. I have to adjust something. Mm. Hmm. Okay. I apologize, I am late today. Got a late start to my day, so threw everything off a little bit, <laughs> but um, I am gonna go ahead and start this, and then whenever everybody has time, I can go ahead and watch this video. Um, in the meantime, I'm just gonna go ahead and go for it. And start adding my colors. We're working with white, brown, yellow, red, and black. Hello, hello. Currently throwing colors on the plate here that we're gonna be using for the owl today. Going with white. White, brown, yellow, black, red. Just some basic colors to throw down real fast and we'll mix them to our liking. Super excited for this owl today. And today, when I'm doing this workaround method with kind of a watercolory idea with acrylic, um, I'm going to go in with a smaller brush. Not the big wide one, but the, one ne the next one down. Here is the palette. We've got white, brown, yellow, black, red. Hopefully that was seeable. Kind of at an odd angle to here today. But what I'm gonna do is put down kind of a soft background. It's gonna be in the middle. Um, not too light, not too dark, but something right in between with all of those attributes. So I'll start with white and brown as a mixture and some water. This is a method I like to use. I uh, kind of did it on the butterfly a little bit yesterday, but something just that can be in the back that's real nice and muted and um, has a natural kind of tone to it. You can add some yellow to that if you like. It's going to be a little bit of everything back here, but mainly water. So a little bit of color, a lot of water. Even if it's dripping, that is fine. I'm just gonna spread what's on here. If you wanna throw um, some green in there, you can. Uh, so I'll throw just a little bit of blue on my palette here as well to show a little bit of green. Kinda just a slight 
pigment of it, not really anything too heavy. Not necessarily noticing a green, but um, getting it in there a little bit with the idea. myself a green here tone it down a lot with this brown and there's something like that in there spread that around with some water I'm working around my owl I'm gonna hit some of these spaces in, inside here because if I don't do it now it's gonna it's gonna be harder to do later You always want some space showing between the subject and whatever it's on or around. You can get a little bit of a dark shade in there if you like. That honestly happened by accident, but I'm happy that it did. So it's real watery, um, just spreading it around with the wet brush and whatever's on it. I have a feeling I might want to make the owl a little bit larger later on to take up some of this extra space that's in, in this canvas. So there's lots of water, lots and lots of water. Oop. A little bit of paint. But water is really going to spread this around the most. I like it splotchy. I like a lot of just stuff happening. A lot of different colors showing. throw some white in there if you like. Just a real basic flowy background. Nothing too intricate. It's there but it's not. It doesn't have to be the center of attention. You go into the owl a little bit if you're doing this and you have a drawing that's okay I do that all the time Hit your edges if you like. As I always say, save the bottom edge for very last at the very end so your easel doesn't stick to the canvas. I'm 
And that is our real Oh, I apologize, my camera is covering things here. Let's see. I hope that that is better. Let me try to move this owl over a little bit here. Maybe I can get that a little bit higher. Oh. All right. Hopefully that's easier to see. If not, I'm going to real quick put this up here. Here so that it can be seen. Mm. If I can, so hard to be on the other side of the camera. There we go. So that's our example for today. If anybody needs that, and hopefully when I position this, it is seeable. And I'm trying to block the light as best as I can. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take a trip down to this brush here. And what I like to do is kind of put down a base coat for the owl, just something real light. So I might go with a really, really, really light kind of brown with a little bit of yellow in it. Just something to lay down for knowing where everything's going to be. Um, like I said, I kind of want to make the owl a little bit larger, so I'm going to actually widen some of these details, <laughs> which, um, you know, if you end up drawing something on your canvas and you end up wanting to change the size of it, um, it's good to have like a reference to go by, but you can also switch it accordingly as you need. So this is a good kind of some good points for how to do that. So I'm gonna start here at the neck. I feel like the neck is kind of what makes everything else happen with this owl. So I'm actually gonna bring it down so that it doesn't run off the canvas. I'm gonna make it pretty wide here. That's gonna be the wing right there on that side. I might actually just do something darker so everyone can see what's going on. So I realize the light and the light are conflicting. So let's go dark. Let's let's take this pretty dark here. So this is gonna be the wing. It's gonna be the neck. The other wing is gonna come the same height almost a little bit higher but almost the same height as the other so all I'm doing is I'm making real light strokes kind of like doing a fur of an animal um, if you've seen my previous videos I go over that in technique but it's just lightly stroking not really pushing down heavy just kind of wisping it out So that's the beginning of that wing there. And I'm gonna go light in here because now we have our div dividing um, lines to help understand what's going on. So let's take a trip inside here now. I'm gonna go real light now in here. Still just wisping, thinking about the neck area and what that kind of looks like. 
if we have to adjust anything we can do so as we go this is a real quick base coat um, if you're gonna have them perched I'm gonna take it down a little bit further for the leg but every direction is very important whatever direction you take is what you're gonna see happening on your canvas so I see this direction now happening with the legs good I'm gonna bring the head down a little bit over here and add a little bit of yellow to that so I can show what's happening still wispy it's just most of this owl is a very wispy motion this is gonna be the first ear Wisping it in there. Pretty much every part of it. Because we can go over top of it with dark and light as need be. But like I said, this is a base coat. So we don't have to be super particular. Just kind of mapping out for myself what I want and where I want it. Taking that direction where I need that direction. Take your time with it, you know. Uh, this is almost like sketching with a brush. So any details you do with a pencil, you're pretty much doing with a brush and you're filling it in. So take your time with it. It's not, you know, a really quick process. It might look like it just because I'm showing this in a short amount of, a short span of time on a camera, but, um, you know, the best results come when you just take your time and kind of let things shape up as they need to. If you want to throw some of this down here, you can. Don't have to do this. This is totally optional. Um, but I liked, um, I like mapping things out for myself, telling myself where I'm going to put what. Now I like how in the example, the wing is actually up by the beak. So I'm gonna bring it a little bit higher. You can work with different um, shades of brown, light browns, dark browns. How I darkened my brown was with a little bit of black, especially for owls. Owls have a lot of black on them. Um, well, these types of owls, they have a lot of black and it's pretty um, solid. And it's really nice for, you know, what's going on on the owl. So I like to wisp all these different kind of shades of browns and just dark browns. And even black when it comes time. On the inside here, a mixture of the yellow and the brown real nice for that wing All right. and I'm really just trying to fill every piece of the owl here every part that's gonna be filled by the owl I'm just gonna go ahead and hit as we're going. That's the back talon. This is going to be the front talon. <coughs> and the other front talon. Just making an adjustment to the size. I really, I like 
when on a canvas you can have a bored subject such as an owl. They really need to be bored because they're really just beautiful animals. I'll add a little bit of brown just so I can tell where my details are. But later on I might switch that up. Just making sure that I know exactly where I've been putting what. Sometimes this is a process, you're just kind of um, filling in spaces as you're building up your subjects. I'm going to come in with a smaller brush for some of these other details now. So I'm going to come up to the beak area. I'm gonna make it kind of fluff out here. Same strokes, these real wispy ones that make that fur technique happen. Um, I know there's a lot more feathers on the owl than there is any type of fur, but um, they kind of look the same when it comes to making this owl. And if you're bold enough, um, you know, take your black and start getting this beak on here. You can use your pinky if you want to kind of guide you. And I'm just going to draw a line and bring it up. And curve it out. It's a really sharp beak that they have. Very, very, very sharp. So I always like to start with a line when it comes to anything sharp it has to be pretty thin. All right, I'm gonna come back up here with this small, smaller brush, and on the other side, put the other. I'm not sure what this is up here. If it's like the hearing part of the owl, I don't want to say the ear, but something like that. I'm not sure what the anatomy all entails, but um, this is kind of what looks like an ear on the other side. Just feathering it out, same way. Coming back over here with some of this kind of orange, orangey brown. Feather that out. And I try to keep everything as flat as possible. Um, that way, as we're going, certain parts are drying, and then I can revisit those areas. Real wispy. I've not really changed any of my technique here. Everything's wispy on this owl. Almost like light sketching with a pencil. I'm light wisping with this brush. If you want to start throwing some dark colors in, you can mix a dark brown with some black. Real dark if you want to go real dark. Or if you want to stick with black, totally up to you. I'm going to start adding some some of this dark detail inside of here. But it's the same technique, just wispy and in. Pretty much everything that I did with the owl was wispy. Letting things fall as they do. Um, the owl that I went by for reference is very colorful. Um, it has a lot of speckles, it has a lot of browns, it has even whites and, and kind of tan colors. The 
this is actually going to lead from that area that looks kind of like an ear. Kind of come down here to the eye. Everything I do is pretty much real subtle at first. I don't want to overdo anything. And this is pretty much, you know, it's a very natural process. Um, it's a pretty typical one for artists that I've seen where you, you know, you can start out with a real basic idea here, a real basic um, kind of outline and then build from there higher and higher and higher until you get it to your liking, until you have all the details that you want. So that could mean that maybe you don't want to go full detail or it could mean maybe you do and um, you leave yourself space in between so you can reach that detail. I'm going to move this pedestal down a little bit as well. So I will actually end up covering some of this background area again. But so I know where he's gripping. I'm gonna put these claws down, these talons. I'm gonna work this dark in. I don't really want it to stick out just yet. I really want to just blend it back. I was just putting it in for separation between the legs here. So you just dry brush it in and it'll fizzle into everything that's going on and it'll actually give you the dimension that you're trying to get. So let me hit these talons over here. Maybe a little bit of that one back there. So that's going to help me set up what he's kind of uh, standing on. Um, I'm also going to hit kind of some dark underneath here where it's going to be shading underneath these kind of toes. And I come in with a dry brush and again, dry brush that in. And so I was going to take this to where it's more along the lines of suggestive. Um, <clears throat> you can spend hours and hours and hours on a piece like this to get every detail of an owl that you want to, you know, get. And, you know, if you want to take that, that process and, and go with it, definitely can. Um, definitely get up a picture of an owl that you like. And, you know start with this kind of process and take it as far as you want to go um but i don't want to make anybody watch this for six hours so um, i'm only going to take it to a certain point and um you know it's a it'll be a good pleasing point and it's definitely a point that you know if i ever wanted to revisit this painting and take it further it's possible you know you just pick it back up you add more details take more time with it That's what's cool about acrylic, acrylic paint. Can usually come back and uh, work more on what you're working on before. A lot of people won't because they want to see their progression, and that's fine too. If you wanted to just restart a new canvas or whatever it is you're going to work on. That's totally an option. 
All right, so I'm gonna take a break from these areas right now. I'm the kind of painter that I'm so just all over the place, so I'm sorry if that is um, a nuisance. <laughs> but it goes to show, kind of, that's my process. If you wanna hone in on certain areas and stay there, um, my only advice is once your gut says kind of to let it dry a bit and come back to it, definitely listen to it, but um, you know, you can take it piece by piece as you'd like. Whatever map out that you have. I'm gonna take the lighter brown now for a moment and come into the lighter brown for this bottom of the wings here that come out, they protrude from the top of the wings. And I actually took a trip back to the larger brush, but you can stick on whatever size brush works for you. I'm gonna add some white in here now, a little bit. Still doing that wisping, wisping motion. I'm gonna take it pretty dark underneath the V's feathers here. Start throwing that into those bottom wings there. You can even add some, you know, black here if you'd like. Kinda came out nice in the example, right in this area, with some black. Even up in this wing, you can throw some darks all of this is working together real nicely for the owl. And think about, you know, things that are underneath other things. Um, for instance, this wing is over top of this body here. What's going to set that apart is um, the contrast. So I don't want to necessarily use black over here, but I want to make it darker right underneath of this wing but it's not gonna be a part of the wing. It's just gonna be right underneath of it, thinking-wise. And when you think that way, it starts to pull it out for you. Pull the wing away from the body. I'm gonna take the smaller brush and I'm gonna dry brush that shadow, just out, outward. That way it's not so heavy, but it's still there. All right, I hope this is all right. I hope everybody is, nobody's confused if you're following along. Um, I hope that this is not too chaotic to watch <laughs> if you're not following along. Throwing some lighter browns back in here. You can get away with uh, really just adding so many different shades of brown. If you'd like. So wisping in, the, in there, thinking like feathers. Never over blending. We don't want to over blend any, anything. It's just wisping these colors in here so they work. If you want to pay attention to the other wing, you can start throwing some details on the other wing as well. Remember, you know, this is the outside of the wing, and there is kind of, there is a underneath this wing that we don't see. So you can come in here with a dark color again, and actually shade inside here. Set it apart from the outer wing. I'm using the light brown to do that this time. Come in with the dry brush and just continue to 
brush that shading outward. If you need to go darker, you definitely can. Just make sure we're not ending up with dividing lines. We're actually going to blend out the shading a lot. Especially behind the body here. We want the body to stick out more. You can still come back in here with some details for the feathers. Um, I would suggest, you know, before attempting this, if you haven't seen any of my other videos yet, Take a look at them, um, get down some good basic foundational ideas, they'll help out a lot with this. I think um, this is kind of like trying to ride a bike before you have practiced riding a bike. And I don't want anybody to be at a loss. I'm going to pay attention kind of around the eye area now with some orange, red and yellow. They mix a nice kind of orange in here and I want to kind of move it around right in this sector. And I'm going to hit the white. A little bit around it. Let it blend. More so than it is real dark right here, it actually is more of a kind of shaded area. But it does have some black trim that shows around the eye and the head. And if you like, you can throw some white up here and then we're going to do a little bit of detailing so we don't want um things to be too heavy up here we really want it to be a little lighter so while it's wet i'm going to take this black and i'm going to mix a gray a little bit of black and white to make a little bit of a dark gray and very lightly on the tip of this brush, I'm just going to raise it. Wisp it upward like we've been wisping. Whatever happens the first time, I let it be. You don't have to be heavy details at all. Their wingspan is pretty large, so one thing that I want to do is come back into these wings here. I'm going to bring them a little bit larger. I always have a very, very large wingspan. They're, they're pretty big birds. Um, I mean, there's all types of owls, but this one particular here is pretty large. So it's going to have a larger wingspan, so it can actually fly. <laughs> And come back down here with the under wing. You know, there's points that you want to convey in your artwork. Um, you know, I really, this owl, I want it to kind of stand strong. I want it to show off kind of, you know, its beauty. Um, and it's powerful, you know, wingspan and the powerful talons. So, you know, you always want to think about what is it with my subject that I'm trying to convey? What is it that when people look at it, I want them to see? This kind of owl, I would hope that it would be encouraging or... Um, 
maybe not so much intimidating in a negative sense, but um, intimidating in a very encouraging, encouraging way. I'm gonna lengthen this a little bit too. Bring this out a little bit more. There we go. Starting to feel better. Still doing these wisping techniques, large or small brush, whatever you're comfortable with, um, switch it up. I'm always switching up my brushes when I wanna go with smaller details, smaller brushes, larger details, larger brushes. Right, so for now, I wanna take a break altogether from the owl um, after I add a couple lighter spots in here. I might throw a little bit of yellow up here too. A little bit of yellow and white just to give it some variation. I'm gonna come back down here and do what I did the first time with the dark browns on the underwing. A little bit of black, just a little, kind of here and there, hidden. All right, so now I'm gonna take a break from from the owl. Um, I'm gonna come over here to where it's sitting on this stump that's outside. Um, that way, I can fill in the background. And then we can just finish out the owl. But I'm gonna start it with a yellow. Um, this stump is, it's almost like it was freshly sawed wood, or how would you say? Words are escaping me today, but um, unfinished maybe, unfinished wood it looked like. So I'm going to start with the yellow and then take it up from there with the white. If I have to go back over the talons, um, I did them there so I knew where they were and we can always go back in. Black covers everything, so covering that for now is no problem. I really want every talon to be grabbing or gripping this piece of wood, so we're going to do it accordingly. Directions going up and down is going to actually keep this nice circle that was formed, it's gonna keep that intact. A little bit of white now. If you want, you can add like a, a pinch of brown. If you were doing my squirrel video, did a little bit of wood, um, it's just real splotchy. So kind of like that wispy, except we're not wisping it. We are just leaving these streaks. So I'm not going from end to end. I'm not going from top to bottom. I'm just streaking these in here. And you can switch up colors if you'd like. I don't really want to go super dark, but sometimes if you just put one little line of dark on there, can disperse it so it's not too dark but it still works with what's going on no more yellow a lot of white I like to add uh, paint to my canvas and then just work with that so I dry off the brush on the towel real well I don't rinse it, I just dry it. Okay. 
Okay. So now it's for the fun part. We're going to work around these talons and come this direction now. And I really want this to be lighter than it is down here. So this is going to be fun. If you have to scrape off some paint to make that work, do it. Scrape it off and dry it on your towel. So I'm glad this happened. This is a good technique. You know, if you have to take paint off, it's real easy to strip it while it's wet. Okay, right off. A little bit still going to be left, but all this gloppy paint is going to be gone. And it might be a little bit easier then to take it higher, like you want. Knowing your paints, knowing your canvas, knowing your brushes. I say that in every video that I've done. <laughs> but it's important. It's very good to understand the medium you're working with. Understand how to get out of certain situations. Yeah, or work with them. I do a lot more working with than I do um, fixing up. And I think I am good so far with where that wood is for now. So I'm going to take a break from that, let it kind of dry off a little bit. Um, come back up to this owl here. Maybe I'll work on the neck a little bit. It is dry enough to do so. So I'm going to bring in some, going back to my wispy technique, just wisping it on. These are feathers. Going to let the white work with the colors beneath it. Bring in some browns. I don't know what type of owl this is, but it's so, it's a very nice one to work with. It's one of my favorites. It leaves a lot of um, space for you to be real creative because they do have, these ones have so many different colors, a lot of different speckles on their feathers, a lot of different switch ups throughout the body. The chest has a lot of this going on, um, but the wings don't, so it switches up quite a bit. You can even get some black in there if you really would like. I'll do more of the black with my smaller brush later on. Um, it wasn't too heavy; it was just it was just slightly there. Now I'm taking kind of these swoopy motions, um, almost like little tiny smiley faces all over. Never hitting the same area more than twice, if that. Or more than once, honestly. And this is, uh, some of these techniques are going to feel weird because you're actually going to see through the paint that you're putting down with this kind of technique here but that's the point um, you know you want a lot of things in the back helping the front happen so seeing through this is okay I'm not trying to cover it completely I'm just trying to kind of mask the back so that when you see through it you see the different textures going on on the very tips of these, you know, make it a little darker. If you need to carry it higher, going lighter, you let areas dry and then come back in them. 
come back to them, <laughs> I should say. And lighten it up, um, little by little. Generally, if you want something to be pure white on your canvas, you don't really touch it. You base coat it with the white, and you make sure no color gets to be a part of that area. But it's pretty rare that you're going to have anything that's absolutely pure white. Um, a light source even. Sometimes you muddy it up just a little just to make things work. So, you know, I never, I never really strive for pure white anything. It's just the idea that, yes, this is white, but there's so many things hitting it color-wise, reflective-wise, lighting-wise, that... It's always going to have other other things going on with it. Once again, I am going to come in here with some dark to separate this a little bit. That back toe from the front toe. Going back up here to the neck. You can see how chaotic I, I really paint. Like it... <laughs> I'll start at the neck and I'll end up down at the toe. Who, who, who knew? So wisping it out again, the feathers up here. Before I forget, let's hit this background. Um, I'm actually going to use a different brush for it this time. I'm going to stick with this smaller one as opposed to the large one I used. And just kind of fill it in the same exact way that I started with. So brown and white to start with, maybe a little yellow. Brown, white, and yellow. Just a little bit of paint and a lot of water. So I'll throw some paint on it maybe. In some spots. And I'm gonna rinse and dry my brush real fast and just dip it in the water a little. I don't want a whole lot of water. Not this time because if it drips you know it's gonna drip onto the scene here. If you're going for that kind of style that's cool. Um, if that's not your style and you want to stick to what's going on not as much water. really want it to still be wet. If you need to go darker, you definitely can. And I would, because we're under the owl here, so it's going to kind of shade the surroundings a little bit. Make sure it doesn't blend with the owl. Alright. So back to my smaller brush here. This guy, we are gonna throw in some browns. And how they are on the example up in this area it's a little bit wet but it's gonna work with me it's not gonna be too bad just building on top of building on top of building on top of building it's like you lay down your foundation you build on top of it until you have your final um, place <laughs> We're building a recreational center. We've got our foundation. 
and you build the roof later on and you build the inside of it and it's kind of the same with painting you're building your your foundation you're building your structure on top of that foundation you just bring it into life as you go let's real quick add the eye here um you can go to a smaller brush if you have a smaller brush i'm going to stick with this one for now but on the very very tip of the brush very little paint uh, if you could see that it's kind of hard to see very little bit of paint not not much at all i'm going to bring the eye this is almost like a sideways i mean it is looking from the side so the eye actually comes like a swoop and then it comes down from the top to the, from that corner it comes down, rounded in another swoop, pretty much the same way. Very, very thin lines, very tip of the brush. And then it rounds off, it comes rounded, another swoop. To finish it all off. Let me bring this uh, closer so you can see the shape pretty well. I don't know how to describe the shape exactly, but it's just three swoops that come together. <laughs> and I fill in the eye with yellow. Sometimes um, you could put the pupil first and then cover with yellow and then vaguely fill the pupil again when it dries um that gives it layers and kind of brings it to life the way it needs to um in this instance i'm not going to do it that way i am actually just going to hit the pupil right in here and let the yellow kind of take it back just a little bit Um, I don't necessarily do my signature thing where I put the little white dot or any of the reflective happenings in the eye with this size owl. Um, when you see them from this far, they have very unique eyes. They have very unique um, ways that their eyes look as opposed to when I did the fish or when I did the squirrel. The, you actually see this nice bright yellow or orange or whatever you would classify this color as you this is you know it's what you'd see and that pupil is so dark you really don't see unless you're right on top of it more of a reflection you really see this this bright color this real vivid color So when it comes to owls, I really don't mess too much with the eyes. I just fill in that color and um, hit the pupil. There are times, like if I'm just um, doing it more abstract, like an abstract the owl, then I would mess with the eye a little more. But you know, the natural eye of the owl just—it's magnificent. So I really don't—I don't like to um, mess with it too much more than reality. Feathers, still doing this wispy motion again. Real lightly over, over the top of the beak a little bit. I can notice a huge distinctive kind of uh, line here, so I actually want to fill that in a little more. Let me see if we could bring that in some. Maybe some yellow in there. I'm 
Sometimes you gotta do it twice. Let this dry, and it should feel a lot better. All right. That way it wasn't sticking out like his leg. All right. So, continue to bring this up if you want. a little bit like I said you could spend hours and hours and hours on this owl if you really wanted to to bring out every detail but I am not gonna put everybody through that <laughs> so there's a point at which it will be enough but if anybody ever wants to um, dive into that and has questions let me know Even just um, the talons of birds, you can really spend a long time working with them, and um, they are they are very fun to just add every detail. I'm gonna come in here and put the talons back, following the old scheme as best as I can here. I have shaky hands. Um, I notice a lot of people do, and will say, you know, I can't, I can't do these lines because I'm shaking. Um, honestly, just take your time. Uh, get used to how you're holding your brush. It might take, you know, some practice to get that down, but you will get it down if you just keep doing it. Um, whether the shaking will ever stop, I don't know, but. Um, I, I shake very much, but I still can manage to get lines where I want them. And um, I try to help everyone kind of understand you, you can. It just, um, it's a matter of practicing, practicing your lines. Everybody, honestly, uh, is not exempt from needing to do, to do that. You know, practicing lines, I sit and will just draw lines sometimes to see how I like them um, and to understand better how you how it is that you should put them down on your painting or your drawing So it's never a bad idea if you want, you know, you can take a pencil and take a sketchbook, draw some lines and see what you like and uh, practice it until you get it right. Visit it the next day, practice again. Um, it doesn't have to be for too long. It could be for, you know, a few minutes to half hour. Connecting some of these shades, some of the shade here so that it'll 
show up nicely. It'll bring things together nicely here. I want it to be a little darker back here. Sometimes if you have something that's way too in the middle, you can start to darken or lighten depending on where things are. This leg in the back is further behind everything, so it's gonna be a little darker. Whereas on the front, it's gonna be a little lighter because the light's hitting it you know, a little bit more. So think about where things are, even underneath of here, gonna go darker. Now, just real quick, I'm going to add kind of the tail feathers here. Same kind of wispy motion. I'm gonna leave fairly vague. Come up and add some details to this wing. Whatever you do to one, you should always do it to the other. I feel like it should be even darker back in this region. Maybe even along here. So I'm going to examine my piece here and see kind of the things that I want to pull out further. I definitely want to hit the beak again. Keep it pretty solid and then I actually want to, I think at this point I might switch down to my smaller brush. So this brush here, every time I show this for the first time, I say you should get one. Still say the same thing. Definitely get one if you can, if you're following along with this and everything. Um, this brush is great for just these tiny details that are going to go and kind of finish off the piece. Just wisping out some some lines. You can do browns, you can do white, you can do yellow. You can add whatever you think. Um, Really, I wouldn't go too much black. Um, kind of the areas that stick out with the black help kind of box the owl into a nice balance. So you really want to be picky, I guess, of where you put the black. Like I would put it here for certain. Um, maybe reiterate this line a little bit here. Definitely this one here as well. I 
and like I said, there are some down here. So we're gonna follow these, kind of each individual piece that's here. We're gonna follow. So the same swoops that I made in the first place on the body, just following those swoops with these lines, very uh, edge of them. If you feel like coming inside the wing here a little bit with it, you can. I'm going to lighten up this wing over here a little bit. Didn't get quite as light as I wanted. But that wispy motion, always, you know, stay consistent with how you put something down the first time. Come back to that technique if you need. That's what's going to set it apart and make sure that everything runs together smoothly. Because if I were to just start covering things, it would really mess up. I would just have to go over and over and over the wing. So much. Much more than I want to. And if you need to set back the weight a little bit, you definitely can. Come back with a dark brown or just some regular brown. Switch it up here and there. Every bit counts. So it's pretty much where I'm going to leave the owl, other than adding a little bit of shading underneath the talons here. So where the feet are, I'm going to use some water with this, that way it's not just dark. And I'm going to kind of follow that line there. A little bit for the actual talons. You're almost just doing a mirror image of the talons with a dark, a dark paint. And I forgot to darken this talon back here. And the one behind it, back here. Let me just make sure I didn't go over that leg right there. Got it. Make 
be just a couple more streaks up here. We're going to bring out the face like everything else is. Stay consistent with this whole piece. small brush. Do these real small feather hair, hair feathers. I keep seeing things popping out at me. brush again that is pretty much the owl um, like I said if you wanted to keep going with all the details Definitely follow, follow that, and um, keep working with it. Um, anybody that has any questions working with this, just let me know if you've done this as I've gone along, or if you do this later on going along. Um, comment me your your final piece. I'd love to see it. I really think this is a fun painting to do. Even though it's a lot of browns, it's it's actually really enjoyable. So I'd love to see your your work. Um, and I thank you all for watching. Um, the next one is going to be tomorrow. We're going to be doing a whale um, and kind of a nautical scene. A lot more on the spectrum of the watery, colory kind of the whole way through. Um, so it'll be a new technique and another one for anybody who wants to try something different. Um, if anybody has any recommendations, any other ideas, um, I have kind of some things lined up for um, almost a week. But, you know, if there's anything that speaks to you in the meantime, let me know and I will jump on that and um, show videos of that as well. So... Thank you so much. Don't forget to sign your work. Um, I'm going to sign it down in the bottom corner here. And don't forget your bottom edge when you are all done. And I will see you tomorrow. Alright, thank you so much. Bye.